Hi everyone, my name is Michelle Studi Campbell and I am the Executive Director of the Kiwanis Youth Programs, which means I get to work with all of our fantastic service leadership programs. And today is a real treat. We have two members from CKI and a community leader here in Indianapolis to talk with us about diversity, inclusion, and equity. This is a critically important topic and we are happy today that we're able to bring this to our CKI Next program um, and let's get started. So I'm going to ask our students, um, Shane and Zarian, to introduce themselves and tell us a little bit about themselves. Um, hello, my name is Shane Petrus. I am the District Governor for the Pacific Northwest District of Circle K International. Um, I'm currently a rising senior at Washington State University. Um, but I am currently at home in Honolulu, Hawaii uh, for the summer. So, yeah, really excited to be here. All right. Welcome, Shane and Zarian. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> so my name is Zarian. Um, I'm from Alabama. I am the immediate past governor um, for the Alabama district. I currently attend the University of Alabama at Birmingham and have been a part of CKI for four years now. Um, I'm a senior there, majoring in nursing, getting a double minor in Chinese and music. I'm super excited to be here. <laughs> We're excited to have everyone. Okay, and we have a special guest with us. We have Charlotte Hawthorne. Uh, Ms. Hawthorne is a director in Lilly's Global Diversity and Inclusion Office. In this role, she is a diversity thought leader and advisor to Lilly's business areas. She works as a strategic partner helping business areas to develop strategies to deliver on Lilly's diversity and inclusion objectives. She also develops and drives external partnerships and community engagement. Prior to this role, Charlotte was a consultant in Lilly's leadership development group, where she was responsible for delivering and developing solutions to grow leadership capabilities for managers at all levels. She received her Bachelor's of Science in Industrial Engineering from Georgia Institute of Technology. Since joining Lilly, Charlotte has had a variety of roles in manufacturing, human resources, global diversity, and Lilly Research Labs. Charlotte is a professional development coach, trainer, consultant, and project manager. She specializes in performance improvement and organizational effectiveness. She is active in her community through service on, our, on the board of Girls Inc. and as an active advocate in Indianapolis public schools. As a wife and mother of four, Charlotte is keenly aware of the challenges and opportunities associated with being successful both at work and home. Her commitment to supporting a diverse and inclusive workforce motivates her to passionately pursue practices and policies that make it possible. Ms. Hawthorne, thank you so much for taking time to be with us today as we discuss this important topic and provide additional insight and perspective for our student leaders. Zarian, to our first question. Yes. Um, so I guess we wanted to kick things off with asking um, specifically, what is your definition of diversity, inclusion, and equity? And what can that look like for a global, global organization like ours? Oh, thank you, Zarian. Um, and of course, there's lots of de defin uh, de definitions in the dictionary, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if I were to put it in, in my own words, I would say diversity, um, and I have a broad definition of diversity, represents all of the elements that make us who we are. So there certainly are things about us, age, race, gender, uh, you can see. But there are probably dozens of things that also make us who we are. Am I in Honolulu or am I in Alabama or am I in China? And where do I grow up? What is my birth order? Um, did I grow up rich or poor? Um, did I grow up, um, you know, rural or, or, or urban? Mm -hmm. Each of those things create a, a, a set of um, identities that help us see the world in a different way. So I define diversity in that broadest of, of perspectives. Um, when it comes to inclusion, inclusion really is a culture. And it's a culture of how do I embrace that unique package that someone brings when they walk into the room. All of those things that not only make them who they are, but give them the ability to contribute in a unique way because they have a lens on life that nobody else 
in the room has. So inclusion is really um, embracing that in a way that helps people to know that they are welcomed and they're valued. So if I put the two together, I often talk about diversity is being invited to the party. So from a global perspective, we can, um, we can bring in diversity, but we don't necessarily have to embrace it and include it. Now, inclusion is when we ask people to dance. So we want you to be a part of the party. We want you to contribute. We want to learn from you, and we want you to learn from us. Now, equity, equity is really about um, creating a fair and even playing field for all involved. So if you think about equity, it's not equality. Equality is if I have uh, four kids and I give each one of them $100, that's, that's equality, right? But if I've got four kids and I've got a, an eight-year-old, an 18-year-old, a 28-year-old, and a 40-year-old, what they all need from me is different. And so I need to give them all what they need but hopefully they need different things at different times, them all to the same level. And I wanna recognize what are either the unique barriers or opportunities that they have. So maybe I take some from one and give more to the other. Now, I, just to, to answer the second part of your question for a, a global organization um, like yours or mine, mm -hmm. uh, just what I said, diversity is we want to recognize and acknowledge the value of diversity um, and the richness of it. We acknowledge, though, that sometimes when you increase diversity, you increase complexity. Because if, if we think more alike, it's a little easier to get along. But to really get the value out of perhaps somebody who has a different perspective to get to the better decision, the better outcome, um, we maybe have to work through some of those differences. So that's diversity and inclusion within our organizations. And we also might want to think about what are some of the bar potential barriers to access to our organizations. Um, you know, if I've got a, a student who has uh, worked their way to college or maybe a first generation student, um, versus maybe somebody who's a you know, third generation Harvard student. What it took for them to get to that point may be very different, and I may need to look at it differently as I um, evaluate uh, and interview them. Thank you, thank you. Um, that was a perfect definition, and I'm glad you specifically broke down each of those and explained, especially with the equity portion, um, a lot of people don't understand the difference between equality and equity, and I'm very thankful that you were able to explain that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I can take on the next question. Um, so what are your thoughts on how we can better diversify CKI in the sense of membership and service and across all collegiate organizations as well? Got it. Um, you know, diversifying organizations I will admit it's not an easy task, um, and, uh, but, but it's worth it. And, and so that gives us the motivation to, to, to want to do it. And that's really, the first, uh, that, that's really the, the first step. The first step is deciding that we want to diversify the organization. And not only do we just want to diversify it, but we understand inherently the value and we embrace the value of diversifying it, because that's what we're gonna need when it gets hard. We're gonna to need to know why are we motivated to, um, to diversify the organization. Then we have to be intentional. So if, the, if an organization is not as diverse as we want it to be, if we continue to do what we've always done, we'll continue to get what we've always got. So if we, market the same way, if we advertise in the same places, if we um, depend on uh, current participants to recruit new participants, 
we may not get to the diversity that we want. So we really have to think about how do we start to think outside of the box? How do we maybe start to go places where people don't know anything about the organization and just start by educating? Um, because you guys are a part of it. And I'm looking at how, um, how intelligent and bright and energetic you are. That's says that the organization has something to value. Chances are there's a lot of other people who will find value as well, but they just don't know about it. So remember back to my definition of equity. If there is no access or knowledge, then the opportunity for them to gain the benefits are not there. So yes, you want to decide that's, that's what you want to do. And then you want to be intentional about, uh, about doing things in, in a different way in order to Thank you so much. Yeah, um, I you were cutting out just a little bit. Um, oh, but, I cut off. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> just a little bit. Yeah, um, but it's okay. I I think that it's really important for us to really think about that change that you're talking about and how far it can really go, especially in our organization. Um, you know, we've always done things the same for so long, and I think that this change is something that change. Some, it's a change that we're seeing in a lot of different areas, and um, this change that we're seeing in TKI specifically. It's going to be something that really improves our districts and helps our members and also enriches our service and just enriches our experience as well. So thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Um, I completely agree with everything that um, Shane said and you as well, um, because as we begin to broaden, you know, and diversify an organization, but also taking that action to include um, those members um, in the organization um, and recognizing those differences and those barriers that we have to overcome, um, we also have to keep in mind Find that we're also joining together, even though we're coming together very diverse and from different backgrounds, we're all coming together to do one thing, and that's to serve our um, communities um, across the globe. Um, so we're all here for that service aspect and giving back to our communities um, and recognizing that in that we can also fellowship together despite our differences and different backgrounds and cultures. So, awesome. um, and I guess that leads us into um, my next question, um, more so focusing on the professional development side. So um, we as members and young professionals starting um, our professional careers, what is the best way to approach um, our new employers and supervisors on this topic to ensure that there is um, diversity and inclusion policies in the workplace? That, that is an excellent question, Zarian. Um, and you know, I can speak both as a corporate professional, and I can also speak as a mom of um, uh, a, a, a rising senior at Purdue. So, like you guys, and two um, two sons who are within their first few years of a corporate um, of a corporate role. And what 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 I would say uh, as a mom is, I would start by saying, I would expect them to say it before you ask about it. So if, if, if I were interviewing today, um, somewhere during the interview process, I would expect organizations to be proactively um, talking about who they are as an organization, what they stand for, and I would absolutely expect to see some um, form of diversity, inclusion, equity, belonging, you know, whatever the, whatever the term they use is. Um, respect for people and innovation and those sorts of things, I would expect to hear um, diversity and inclusion um, from them. Now, in addition to that, um, I would say it's okay to be direct and there's some ways to get at it indirectly. So we're in a, we're in a, a time now where I think it's totally appropriate and fair to ask direct questions about just what you said. You know, what are your policies? What, what is your philosophy with regard to diversity, inclusion, and equity? And any person who's hiring or a hiring manager, I would expect maybe not to have the experience that I have with a definition, but that they should be able to say what the organization um, is doing. 
if you're not as comfortable with, with being as direct with that kind of question, I think there's some indirect ways you can ask as well. And what you might want to think about is, um, you know, can you describe what a long-term career at your organization might look like for me? And then you listen and you listen to how they develop talent. Um, have they thought about what are some of the opportunities that you might be engaged in? And are you able to hear elements of how you might succeed? And do you see other people who look like you? So finally, I would always start with a company's website. Um, I would start with their website. Most organizations have a diversity page. Often it's under either about us or corporate social responsibility, or maybe their recruiting page. But there should be a page dedicated to their efforts around diversity and inclusion that should also give you a good glimpse of who they are and what they stand for, as well as what their leadership looks like. So if you're looking at a Fortune 500 company, typically they'll have pictures of their top levels of the organization. Do you see somebody who looks like you? Thank you. Um, and I guess to kind of piggyback off of that, um, so what, what would you say you would do in terms of a situation where you look at those those top leadership roles and a company, you know, you may see you have diversity on the lower levels, but like when it comes to the big upper um, corporate levels, you don't see that diversity. How do you go about adjusting that? And that's not an uncommon, um, that, that's not an uncommon situation. And, and I would say that that's certainly not a, a showstopper, right? But I do think it's an opportunity, if you're comfortable, to raise that in the, uh, in the discussion, not in a challenging way, but in a way that's um, inquiring about what are they doing to, or you know, do they have programs in place that are um, aimed at diversifying the leadership within the organization? organization and you know there's nothing wrong with just acknowledging what you saw you know so it's you're not you're not challenging you say when I looked at the website I observed that the senior leadership looks fairly um, homogeneous are there some things that you have in place that or what do you have in place because we, we're going to assume that they do and that's where you're able to listen and um, engage the, the level of um, the, the level of, of energy and impact and even knowledge of what they're actually doing. So great, great question. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Just to, just to add to all of that, I think that um, it, was a, it was a really great answer, Charlotte. And um, I think that based on the answer, a big thing that I think about, especially when you know, you're know you talking about asking those questions in the interview and doing that research, it's matter of holding these companies and these organizations accountable. And I think that that's a big thing that a lot of people are focusing on right now is, um, you know, holding these organizations accountable and doing the research and really thinking about the ways in which we uh, interact with these organizations. And, you know, does it align with our views? Does it align with who we are? Um, I think that's really important. And it's something that is so strongly instituted in everything that we need to be doing. Um, which leads me to my next question. Um, so in your opinion, what can young people do today to keep this conversation going and to turn our speeches and our performative action into uh, real action? Into real action. Not just tweets, right? Right, yeah. <laughs> so um, I, I would say um, th there's certainly lots of things that, that we can do. And, and right now, I, I would say one of the, the most important is to learn is to learn um, all you can about uh, history. Um, I think for some of us right now, we're learning that perhaps the history that we, um, that we thought we knew, we don't necessarily know. And if I can just share a, a quick story, I, I, um, I saw a picture once of a, um, you guys are familiar with the, the, the game Jeopardy? And so, you know, there's sort of five categories and five questions in each, uh, in, in each uh, uh, area of the board for Jeopardy. And the, the picture was of the final round of the 
collegiate um, championship. So these are the smartest of the smartest college students, right? And the board was completely clear, except for one category that had not been touched. So the whole board was clear. And if you can imagine what the one topic that had not been touched, you might think it's rocket science or brain something, it was black history. So the brightest students um, who understood all sorts of trivia had no knowledge of African-American history. So the first thing I think we can do is do what we can to learn. Um, there's, there's lots of information out there now and not just learning from somebody else's blog um, or their opinions, but let's go to, there's some wonderful documentaries, there's some great books, people who have done research. Um, let, let's learn from, from the experts, not the expert opinions. Um, then to acknowledge the truth of, of what's there and not run from it or defend it. So let's, let, let's hear, let's learn, let's be open. And then to do exactly what a lot of you are doing, and that is to advocate. Um, I say vote with your feet. So where do you go? What do you support? What organizations do you align yourself with? Um, vote with your ability to speak out. Um, challenge your friends, your neighbors, yourselves um, about uh, to, to, to continue to learn and grow. Vote with your dollars. Where do you spend your money? Where do you donate your money? Um, and then vote with your ballots. You know, who do you support and what do you advocate and who do you align yourself with who actually uh, support the kind of, uh, of things that you want to support? So lots of opportunities there. Yes, I, I definitely think that that's so valuable. And um, I think to add to that, it's, you know, as a service organization, we're, we're leaning more towards advocacy as service now going into this next year. And I think a lot of districts are focusing on ways in which our organization can support organizations like Black Lives Matter. And I think that for a predominantly white-led organization like ours, it's really important for our white folks and our white members, as well as our non-Black people of color in our, in our organization to do that research and to really Think about the ways in which, you know, why haven't we learned that in the past and ways that we can make that change to make sure that we continue to learn about it um, in all aspects of our organization, whether that be service or through leadership. Um, so thank you. That is excellent. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Well, that kind of brings us to our time. Um, I just want to give everybody a, a minute or two if they have some parting thoughts that they want to share as we wrap this up. And so, um, Shane, I'll start with you if you have any else you want to share with our CKI Next family listening in? Yeah, sure. Um, I just want to uh, thank CKI as well as Charlotte and um, Zarian for um, being here for this conversation. I think that this was um, really amazing for our members to get to listen to um, and to have these conversations. I want to urge our members and our districts to also have these conversations with your administrators, with your Kiwanis partners, um, anyone in the organization. It's those conversations that are going to initiate the change that we need. So thank you. Thank you. And Zarian? Yes, I want to say thank you as well um, for Charlotte for being here, Shane and Michelle, um, for putting this on uh, for our CKI Next members, um, because this, these are topics that um, need to be discussed um, and addressed within the organization. Um, and it's important that our members continue to educate themselves and imp implement this um, within their own districts. Um, but ed educating themselves in the right way, as Charlotte pointed out, um, not just listening to expert opinions, but um, gaining that knowledge from actual experts. Um, so that's really important. Um, and in doing this, um, it will definitely progress the organization um, into the next level of being a bigger and better organization. Um, so thank you so, so much for everything, uh, Ms. Charlotte, and your um, vast knowledge of wisdom. All right. Any final um, advice or wisdom you want to share with us, Ms. Hawthorne? You know, not necessarily wisdom. What, what I would say is um, I am so excited with, with what I see, um, especially in your generation. Um, while what we're experiencing as a nation is painful, um, pain is, is, is often 
a necessary platform for progress. And while it's painful, I am so motivated because not only uh, do, do I think people of color feel heard and supported in a way that many of us have not felt in, um, in, in, in our careers or, or lifetime. Um, but, but I just acknowledge um, uh, you guys as young adults, um, your generation, you, you hear this all the time, you're smart, you're energetic, you're engaged, you're socially conscious, and you are set to change the world. So I admonish you to take advantage of the energy, the insights, the exposure. You guys have come up in a generation that is so much more diverse than your parents and certainly your parents' parents. So you understand, you're bold, you're willing to ask more questions and don't waste it. You have a seat at the table. Take advantage of that seat. Challenge us. Um, we're getting tired. Some of us are getting tired, so we, we, we're ready to pass the baton. And I feel extremely encouraged that I have um, people like yourselves, and I'm sure there's many, many more um, within um, your organization that are capable, willing, and able to take the baton. So congratulations. Good luck next year. I look forward to seeing great things from you. All right, and on that note, I'm just gonna say that this is our commitment at Kiwanis International to continue this conversation. This will not be a one and done. This is a beginning and an evolution as we continue uh, with continuous improvement to have better intentionality around these issues and others. We are leaders around the globe and encourage all of us to really lean in and uh, learn more and stay tuned. Uh, we'll, have, we'll continue this dialogue uh, as the year unfolds. So again, thank you so much to Ms. Charlotte Hawthorne, Zarian Morris, and Shane Petrus. All right, thanks everyone. All right guys. <laughs>